Before we get into that, I just want to ask you about my blood work here. Okay. I actually just got my blood work sure. the other day. Uh, I'm not going to put it up on the screen here because I don't really want to share my personal information, but um, my LDL was at 298. Uh, mm -hmm. My HDL was over 80 and my mm -hmm. triglycerides were around 50. Now, okay. my doctor thinks that I should go on a statin and yeah. um, he was quite worried about my health actually. So but mm -hmm. uh, I would just talk it over with you first. Um, so what do you yeah. think? Do you think I'm about to blow a gasket or, or what's happening here? No, no, not at all. I think, first of all, I think you, let's, let's start the way we mean to continue. I think your doctor is an ignorant cunt, <laughs> basically. Um, your doctor is trained to think a certain way, but not only trained to think a certain way, your doctor is absolutely mandated to think a certain way and to communicate with you in a certain way. Your doctor is mandated by the licensing board of the Medical Council of Canada to tell you that if your LDL is above this level X, then you are to be prescribed a statin and your doctor is to lean on you as hard as possible to get you to comply to take that statin because they are told that uh, cholesterol, particularly a thing that they will call LDL cholesterol, is causal in heart disease and as such it needs to be reduced to reduce your risk of developing heart disease in the next x number of years unfortunately the whole argument falls to bits as soon as you start to look at it scientifically now don't forget my background is in cardiovascular pathophysiology so if anybody knows what does and does not cause heart disease it is a professor of cardiovascular pathophysiology so hello first problem ldl cholesterol does not exist there is no such thing as ldl cholesterol if you look in any biochemistry textbook you like anywhere in the world, you will find a diagram that shows the molecule cholesterol. It'll say, here is a molecule of cholesterol, do, 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 do. carbons, hydrogens, all that kind of stuff. There aren't different forms of it. There isn't one called HDL cholesterol. There isn't one called LDL cholesterol. There's only one form. It is cholesterol. The HDL and LDL parts, they're appending there are not cholesterol at all. They are lipoproteins, meaning they are protein fat molecules or phospholipoproteins really, because there's quite a bit of phosphorus involved as well. And these are actually carriers. These are the delivery agent. You cannot dissolve um, lipids in water. Cholesterol is a lipid. It will not dissolve in water. It is not a polar molecule. Water is a polar molecule. If you pour a lipid on top of water, it won't mix. It will sit on top. They will be separated. So you need a package to package up fats and to travel them around in your blood. Otherwise, they would just separate out of your blood. That wouldn't work. And that's what lipoproteins do. There are several classes of lipoprotein. There are low density, LDL. There are medium or intermediate density, IDL. There are high density, HDL. And there's also another class called highly microns as well, if you're really interested in that kind of stuff. The When you go and get your blood test done and it says your HDL is, your LDL is, your total cholesterol is, what they're doing is they're measuring how much cholesterol in total there is in your blood. And then they are apportioning that cholesterol, which is identical. Remember, there's only one molecule. This is the cholesterol carried by that lipoprotein. This is the fraction of it. This is how much was carried by the low-density lipoprotein. And it's very interesting to note that invariably on a standard blood test, when they say your, they say your LDL portion of your cholesterol, your low-density lipoprotein cholesterol was X, in your case, what did you just say? 290 or something stupid like that. Um, that is an estimate. It is not measured as such. It is an estimate with a degree of error, a bracket of figures that could be anything, and it's really quite wide. Okay, let's accept 
that the number that they've given you is remotely accurate, which it probably is not. But let's just say it is. And let's say your LDL really is touching 300 milligrams per deciliter, I presume is what you're, you're talking about there. And what they'll say to you is, well, we really want your LDL below 70. You're at nearly 300. You're going to die next week from heart disease. You're at real risk here. So we need to put you on this statin medication to get your LDL down. So that then leads us to the problem where we go, well, okay, are there any experiments in existence anywhere in the peer-reviewed literature where they take genetically identical people at, a, at an exact age, whatever that is, preferably at birth for real scientific uh, integrity, and they lock those twins, sets of twins, as, as many as they need for statistical power, so hundreds and hundreds and thousands of sets of identical twins, and they split those identical twins up and they put half the twins in one lab, half the twins in another lab, where they control every single aspect of their lives down to the number of daylight hours, the color of the light, the amount of exercise, how that exercise is undertaken, how those people are treated and spoken to, exactly how they're fed, including the exact intake of saturated fat or cholesterol or whatever it is they're looking at, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they follow those people until those people die of heart disease or anything else. That, that experiment does not exist. Obviously, of course it doesn't. You can't do that ethically. If you could get past an ethics committee, which you never will, to do a study like that, how are you going to pay for that? Because that's going to cost billions of dollars to do. Um, how are you going to find hundreds of thousands of sets of twins who are prepared to give up their entire life for the betterment of science, or are we going to genetically create these people? And that's a real ethical problem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So just forget it. It's just there is no experiment that proves cause and effect. So what we have is inference. The problem with the inferences that we have is that they're all based on either epidemiology, which is not remotely anything akin to science at all. It's not controlled. It's not disciplined. It's pseudoscience dressed up as science made to look like it can inform on cause and effect. It absolutely cannot. Or a subbranch of epidemiology called Mendelian randomization, which looks at the differences in genes between persons and says, look, according to associations with their genomic makeup, here is their likelihood of this, that, or the other thing, which again is just another form of association. So that's not cause and effect either. So anyone that says we are absolutely certain that cholesterol, and in particular, somehow the cholesterol carried by low-density lipoprotein is causal in heart disease, because why would it be any different from, lipo, from cholesterol carried by any other carrier? It's the same molecule exactly, don't know. But somehow that's causal, they say. Well, I say, fine, show me the experiment that backs that up. There isn't one, ergo, forget it. It's, it's ridiculous. You look at the largest associative data set that's in existence anywhere in the world, and that is a graph that I'm always showing on my videos on my channel, which is produced by um, the British Heart Foundation and the World Health Organization. Not working together, this is not a peer-reviewed article. This is their published data on this versus that. So the British Heart Foundation have measured the total and LDL cholesterol and averaged it out for people in 168 different countries, several hundred million data points around the world. And on the other axis, if we look at the age-adjusted death rates in all of those countries, and we plot the death rate per 100,000 persons per year versus their cholesterol level, what we get is a graph that shows us that the lower your cholesterol, total cholesterol that is, the lower that is below 220, the more that associates with death from all causes and from every subcause as well. So heart disease, cancers, strokes, you name it, all the big killers, every single one of them all follow the same trend. You drop your cholesterol total below 220, your risk goes up, well, you know, risk, your incidence of death goes up, 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 and quite precipitously up, quite markedly up. So to me, there's just nothing underpinning this ridiculous idea about cholesterol as a causal agent in heart disease. 
Atherosclerosis, which causes heart disease, is caused by chronic systemic inflammation. Of that, there is no doubt whatsoever. Anyone who understands cardiovascular pathophysiology at all will back me up on that and say, yep, absolutely, it is chronic systemic inflammation. It is not the concentration of circulating cholesterol in your blood. And as such, lowering that is not only unlikely to be helpful because it's not the cause of the problem in the first place, but actually the drugs that they prescribe to do that, statins and PSK9 inhibitors, are vastly grossly dangerous. They are contraindicated metabolic poisons that cause so many very, very dangerous side effects that what you actually get is that graph that I was talking about where the risk of the risk of the incidence of death goes up and up and up as cholesterol level goes down and down and down. So it just doesn't stand even basic cursory refutation. There is no argument existing anywhere in the literature that can back that up. Again, sorry for the very long answer, but this is the stuff that is my bread and butter. And so I need to be very, very clear on it. So no, cholesterol does not cause heart disease. Does Not only should you not lower your cholesterol, because that will lower your risk of heart disease somehow, you absolutely should not do that because it will, if anything, increase your risk. So your doctor needs to go and get reschooled, but your doctor won't because the medical council will need to completely change their entire attitude and they won't. Why not? Because they're in the pocket of big pharma who make drugs to, to lower your cholesterol. Sorry about that.